Hello YouTubers, Vegas Cyclone Freak here today. The weather sucks outside again, it's been raining like the last couple days, so I'm doing another guitar related video today. And today I thought I'd cover my Seamer Duncan convertible 100 watt tube amp here. Um, I was not aware of the existence of this amp until I met a friend of mine about 10 years ago and he had like super awesome tone all the time and then I found out what his amp was and it was this amp right here and uh, I thought it was kind of an odd looking amp but you know it's uh it was something that was ahead of its time um, they didn't really have the I know they didn't have the really good technology at the time to make this a bulletproof amp but even so it's still a pretty awesome amp in my opinion when it's all working correctly so what this is it's a it's a two channel amp it uses a channel switching relay inside and uh, so it's got two sets of controls it's got uh, overdrive master volume and then treble mid bass and then it's got a reverb level control and then you can plug in a channel selector switch in there which I happen to have I'll show you that in a minute you can also use a regular passive volume pedal to do this um, so-called variable wattage circuit what this really is is it's just it's kind of a little can it's kind of like a fancy master volume like a secondary master volume it really just controls how much signal can get to the grid of the power tubes but it does a pretty good job of like simulating like a 5 watt and a 20 watt and etc amp um, I kind of generally like to have like around in the 30 to 40 watt range this button here is just a channel manual channel selector switch and then you've got a secondary uh, input jack like you could have a second guitar plugged in here if you wanted to and then this little RCA jack here is for a load resistor plug which you can put on the input to change uh, I guess like your input impedance to make it brighter or you know tape brighter or or less bright you can kinda taper the tone of your guitar right at the input now this is a 1 by 12 amp <clears throat> and the the um, power tubes there's you can use EL84s you can use four of them or you can use uh, four 6L6s you just have to rebias the amp accordingly and uh, it's a little hard to see in here but it uses a 5U4 rectifier tube and then I've got four EL 34s in here and and then that those two big blue can capacitors or the power filter caps and then there's a series of preamp tubes under here one of those is for the phase inverter And then we have a series of controls on the back here. <clears throat> Power core, of course. We got a fuse, which I, yeah, it's a 5 amp, 250 volt fuse, slow blow. And then it's got the power switch, kind of like a fender where you can reverse the switch, try to lower the hum. Then it's got a standby switch. Then it's got two convenience outlets on the back. So you can, like plug your pedal board or something in there. And then when you come over here, you've got uh, an effects loop, which I've never tried to use. And this really cool feature, you can have, uh, it's a pentode triode switch. So that'll switch your power tubes from pentode to triode mode. I like the triode mode. It's kind of a little warmer sounding. Um, I guess it's not quite as loud as when it's in pentode mode. Uh, going from memory on that one. 
And then they have a few different speaker output jacks. Here you've got a variable damping output, which uh, does exactly what it says. You can vary the speaker dampening, dampening by rotating this little pot here. It's also got a 4 ohm speaker jack and a regular 8 ohm speaker jack here. And you can also use a, a, a slave cabinet. And then, of course, here's your uh, reverb send and return lines. There's a reverb tank down in here, which is, I believe, an Accutronics amp. And then it came from the factory um, stock with a, with a fan and it blows the air upwards and then it kind of ventilates the chassis because um, there's there's some heat generated inside there you'll, you'll, you'll see in a minute why now I believe that these speakers came with the option to have um, I think it was an EH speaker or a Celestian Sidewinder um, these I didn't even know about these speakers until I bought this amp off eBay. Um, I had never heard of a Celestian Sidewinder, but uh, it's a it's a pretty cool sounding speaker. This one's a 8 ohm, 12 inch, and I believe the 150 means it's good for up to 150 watts. Now, what made this amp kind of revolutionary at the time was the fact that it has these preamp modules inside of it. And so inside of here when you pull off this cover, well before I do that, here is showing the two channels. Channel, one of the channels is, uh, I'm not sure which correlates to which channel, but it'll show you, so it uses these preamp modules, so everything, either channel goes through module one. And then, so one channel you'll have module two and four, and then out, and then module three and five and out, depending on what channel you're on. So, anyways, when you pull this off, you can see inside of here we have these little preamp modules. That's kind of what made this amp really uh, kind of a fantastic idea. You know, you can have this just kind of almost infinitely versatile amp with all the different sounds you get out of it. And, uh, you know, I've, over the years I've picked up a lot of these off eBay and I actually made a few of my own. I had, on my website one time, I had this, this uh, amp was completely reverse engineered. I had all the schematics for it, all the preamp modules, schematics, and the whole works, how you can modify the thing, all these different things you can do. But anyway, so, like, I'll pull out this one. And you can see this little preamp module. It's like a little self-contained module with a tube. Some of them are solid state. Like this one right here, this hot mod is just a um, it's like a it's got like a power transistor and it's like a solid state, so I don't know, it kind of gives you sort of a martially sound, but anyways, back to this. The the kind of the one downside of this amp, which isn't I mean, it's not a really super bad thing. It's just something you got to work around. But the uh, the weak kind of the weak link is how these modules have to plug into these little sockets down on the main PCB. Um, they're they're not the most secure connection. You know, they can get loose, and the amp can do weird stuff. But generally, I mean. If you know how to deal with this amp, it's it's not as bad as I make make it sound. You know, as far as reliability. Um, now I, I hadn't fired this amp up for quite a long time, and I had my daughter playing her electric through it, and I had this kind of buzzing, hum buzz thing going on, and I couldn't quite figure out what it was. And then later on, uh, I figured, well, I'll take this module cover off and pull all these modules out and put them back in and see if that makes the problem go away and it went away and so I mean it's pretty simple to 
you know, it's it's not as complicated as it sounds. I mean, my, some people might think it's this big pain in the butt. Oh, I gotta take this thing off, pull all the modules out. But it's really, you know, like two minutes, you're done. So you gotta just gotta do when the power's off. Let the th amp drain for, you know, like it says here, allow minutes to elapse before attempting to change the modules. That's just so you don't get arcing happening from B plus. You know, with these modules here. They all have a, like a B plus and a ground and a signal path, you know, input, output, and so <clears throat> you don't want to be unplugging these things while you have your amp on. That's a bad idea. You can screw things up. <clears throat> so now back to the modules. <laughs> I have a whole collection of them here, and apparently when you would buy one, they came in these little plastic containers like you would when you buy a Seamer Duncan pickup they come in these little plastic boxes in you know individual pickups and so um, I got a few of these original boxes <clears throat> and uh, I even built a few of these myself like this one here the solid state FET module someone was selling it on eBay and um, uh, I don't remember the store on exactly. I think they they sold it before I could buy it or something, but I, I had the pictures of it. And so I built this one entirely from just looking at pictures. Um, I was able to figure it out. And this one uh, kind of gives you, a, well, I don't know, sort of like a, Depending on what modules you use, I mean, you could get kind of a like a, a warmer sounding like jazz chorus amp or you know something like that. It, I mean, it, that's what makes this amp kind of so neat is there's just so many sounds you can get by changing the modules. And so they they had a whole bunch. I mean, so what do I got here? I've got a high gain hybrid and a presence module and a high gain EQ. And then a normal solid state IC. These are kind of hard to find. Um, the classic gives you kind of a classic amp sound. Low cut classic. And then I made a classic distortion. Solid state FET with the one I made. And then, see up here I've got classic EQ, the hot mod, another classic high gain hybrid. That's a rare bird right there. Trying to find one of those is tough. I looked for one of those for years. I tried making one, but the uh, the big question is what kind of... They had a, a special diode in there, and uh, apparently it wasn't being made anymore. I had to figure out well, what, what would be an equivalent. And I built one, and it seemed to work okay, but I, I really wanted to get an original one, and I finally did, like, several years of searching on eBay and one came up for sale and I jumped right on it. And then uh, they had the Cascode module as well. And I think that was pretty much all the different modules they had. I mean, you could see, if you look at the schematics, you can see how what modules you had where. I mean, you, you could have like two completely different sound of amps just by changing the channel. So, it's a pretty Pretty brilliant idea, um, but like I said, the, the technology they had at the time to use was kind of its weak point. Um, now, apparently the story behind this amp is uh, Seymour designed this amp for um, Jeff Beck, who apparently at one time was using these amps, and there's even a guitar player ad um, with him in there, oh, I don't know, I think that was about 1987. Now, if I remember right, these amps were introduced in 1984, and they had some problems initially, and some of them had to get sent back to the factory to have some tweaks done to them, and, uh, and then they had the convertible 2000, and I don't remember when they stopped manufacturing. I think it was around like 1992. So for like eight years they had them, and 
they had a lot of problems and I think that's one reason why Seymour got out of the amp business he was just like you know screw this amp stuff it's been too much trouble but I don't know if you're aware of those Randall amps that were out a few years ago that had the preamp modules in them that was a much more elegant and bulletproof solution because you could just plug the module in and there was no kind of sort of cheesy sockets like what's used inside of here but you know at the time in 1984 this was the best technology they had to use so um, <clears throat> you know as far as tone I mean these things are really great tone machines if they're all working well um, they sound they just can sound really killer and um, you know the other thing they don't sell for very much people generally ask for between like three and four hundred dollars on eBay I don't know what they're going for now but um, you know I, I believe I got this one for about 325 on eBay about 12 years ago and it was caked with dust everywhere I had to clean it up now I had put casters on as well it did not come with the casters they're just like the fender casters drilled out the cabin and put them on <clears throat> now the one downside if you're gonna buy one of these amps I would suggest that you do a certain mod to it there this this power transformer right here um, and the output transformer which is here you cannot get replacements for them so there is a little modification you can do to add some diodes on the rectifier tube here so on the outputs of that so that if this rectifier tube is the short it doesn't fry your power transformer and you, you cannot get a replacement for this thing it's a custom made transformer and it's not made anymore and it's got all these different outputs on it and uh, if you fry this thing this thing is just a pile of parts now so that's one mod that I would do um, if you if you want to know more about that you can message me in in the comments and I can uh, explain to you what has to be done it's it's really a pretty simple mod you know it involves having to take out the chassis and uh, do a little bit of soldering but it's a pretty simple thing to do so if you uh, happen to see one on eBay or you, you have someone recommend one of these to you, you know, I would say don't be shy. If the thing's working good and it's in generally good condition, I would, uh, you know, I would jump on it because these things, like I said, are just great tone machines. So, um, hope you found that interesting and useful and, uh, you know, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. I'll have more guitar-related stuff as well as cycling stuff because uh, I have a passion for both those things. So, um, thanks for watching and uh, check in again another time. We'll have something else up for you to watch. Thanks.